Hi everybody, this is Johnny. I'm going to go through CalTPA Cycle 2, Rubric 2.3, and we're on Step 2, which is Teach and Assess. So let's take this apart a bit. Let's look at the essential question. How does the candidate support student development and demonstration of academic language in relation to the content-specific learning goals. I mean, everything's about the learning goals, so make sure you have good ones. All right? So what matters here is academic language. And I'm defining it a bit here to help us move along through this rubric. The first bit is it's the content-specific language used by the teacher to engage students in the subject matter. All right? So you can imagine you're in a science class and the teacher talks like a scientist and uses the terms of a scientist and expects writing like scientists okay would write from the students the second one is the content specific language used by the students to deepen understanding so you can imagine um, if you're doing some kind of writer's workshop where kids are peer editing that they have to talk about each other's work in a particular way that's a form of academic language or you're having kids solve problems in groups in a math class the ways in which language supports and makes better that problem solving is academic language and importantly it's not just vocabulary examples in math when people are conjecturing explaining describing justifying what they're doing in the mathematics they're using forms of academic language in language arts people are retelling inferring comparing relating all the things you do when you discuss a text or someone's writing and you're doing the kinds of academic language that fit with that content area. So let's take a look at the requirements for 2.3. Important note, as always, you must meet all level three requirements. Missing any of any one of these requirements moves you to level two. All right. So what I've done is I've taken level three apart and I'm setting out each of the requirements so you can make a kind of checklist for yourself. You want to do all of these things. So let's read the text and then look at the musts. First off, um, there are two blocks here. This is the first block and we'll be addressing it here. And here's the second block and we'll be addressing that here. The first block, the candidate uses specific learning activities and informal assessments to provide opportunities for students to develop and demonstrate develop and demonstrate academic language specific to the language demands of the learning segment and the content specific learning goals let's take this one apart so there are two things your learning activities must address academic language and your informal assessments have to address academic language as well so you're looking to see how students are using the academic language and characterizing it through some kind of informal assessment, all right? So that has to happen, both what they're doing and how you're measuring. The third thing, teaching must intentionally push development of the academic language that makes good understanding of the subject matter. Remember, it's not just enough to address vocabulary, okay? So this is, this is all to increase their learning, not just to give attention to the language. The language itself is improving and making possible the learning. Make sure that's clear too. How you, what you're doing, your activities and your assessments are helping you to use language as a leverage, academic language as a lever to improve their learning. Okay. The other requirement here is students have to show their use of academic language. So you want to encourage subject matter forms of talk and writing in the activities you set out. All right. So if you have students working in some kind of problem solving activity, they should talk like mathematicians. If you have students in a writer's workshop or they're doing peer editing, the students should be talking to each other like editors, like writing, writing peers. So those are the requirements for that first block. In the second block, candidate addresses language demands for the whole class through instructional adaptations to support content learning. So for this one, the requirement is whole class adaptations. All right. So you want to make sure that you're making the language use and the attention to academic language through your learning activities and formal assessments fit who you're teaching and considering all the different kids that you have in your classroom. All right. And I wrote down here as a note, as you teach the core content, academic language must be addressed and taught. 
in parallel to deepen understanding of that content. That's the most important thing. To really get to the level three, do this thing. So I'm going to put another bullet here. It should be clear in your writing of, in your planning, that you're using academic language to deepen students' learning of the content. All right? Describe your intentional moves. This is your learning activities or your instructional strategies. Your intentional moves to develop a student's understanding and use of academic language. It's something you're teaching. It's not just something that sits beside what you're, what you're teaching. All right, so these are the musts. Let's look through. On this side, we have one, two, three, four requirements. Over here, we have two requirements. So if you're making a check sheet for yourself, Make sure you look at each one of those and see if that you've done those things to get to level three. Now, let's push ourselves a little bit, take ourselves to level four. So I just want to remind you that level four is sometimes just a little step up. All the big requirements sit in level three. To get to level four sometimes is a little bit more work, and that makes it worthwhile. So let's take apart level four. All of level three plus Candidate differentiates instruction to address the needs of individual learners, English learners and standard English learners is appropriate, relative to the language demands of the learning segment through specific adap instructional adaptations or accommodations. Okay, So the musts for this, for level four, musts, different approaches clearly set out for different students. This is following your work from cycle one. You did that kind of work in cycle one, you had an English learner, you had a student with an IEP or 504, you had a student who comes to learning differently. How are you, how are you considering your learning activities, instructional strategies, and assessments in, in conjunction to who they are? All right. Um, the next thing is academic language is something necessary to learn alongside the content to deepen understanding of that content. You clearly need to show how you are supporting all of your students. Okay. So don't just make it generic, you know. For some of my students will need this kind of attention with academic language. My other students will, will do well by this kind of attention to academic language. I'm organizing my, my, um, my discussion around these things, and this kind of academic language will matter, and I want to make sure that these students have access to that kind of academic language. All right. So you clearly need to show how you are supporting all of your students, especially students who are, are learning school-expected English, so your English learners. Describe the scaffolds that will support both access and use of the content-specific language. So you want to have both kids getting that language, but also using that language. What are you doing to make sure that language is living, that academic language is a, an essential, normal part of what's going on in your lessons? So to level four, you essentially have um, two things you want to do, different approaches for different kids and justifications for those, all right? So different approaches for different kids and make sure you're justifying why you're doing it that way. Let's move to level five, so let's be truly ambitious. Level five. On level five, you have to have all of levels three and four, okay, plus candidate provides evidence-based ELD strategies and developmentally appropriate individualized small group and whole class academic language adaptations and accommodations, resulting in an inclusive environment where all students are actively engaged in learning. Level five is always pushing, involving all students and bringing them all into the learning. So the musts for this. ELD strategies to promote academic language development. Okay, so that should be plain. If you are very intent and focused on the ELD students and how you're supporting them with academic language, you'll be fine. You'll get to this place. You want to have varied interaction and activities to support academic language development. So you want to have things happening individually, with small groups, and whole class. Make sure that's shown up in your teaching, that you're not just addressing academic language of the whole class and never having any talk about that kind of language when you're working with a small group or with, when you're working with an individual kid. It should be happening in all the different kinds, all the different shapes of your teaching, whole class, small group, individual work. And the last one, this is the most important one. You want to focus on inclusivity. How are all students actively engaged together 
in developing their understanding and use in using academic language. So this is where you can imagine either in a writer's workshop or in some kind of problem solving activity in mathematics, where kids are working together in groups or in pairs and using this language to support each other and bring each other into the learning. Okay, so everybody belongs in the learning and academic language is a shared tool, a shared means for every student to support every other student's learning as well. So level five is always a reach, but that's in, that means that's aspirational, like I said. So for level five, you won't have three things you want to focus on, three things. Make sure these things happen and you can move to level five. So when you, the evidence that you have for this to show that you're doing all right by this particular rubric, you want to work from your annotations. So you can imagine in your annotations all the places where you'll say academic language, academic language, academic language, inclusivity, higher order thinking, all those kinds of things that show up in your video clips. And then when you describe your informal and student assessments, where does, where does academic language show up in your analysis of the informal assessments and student self-assessments? In that narrative, it should show up. Okay. So this has been 2.3. I'm going to move on to 2.4 now. hope this has been helpful.